China deploys its military as Biden comes to Asia. A massive leak reveals the shocking secrets of Chinese police. And China's economy is fracturing. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Matt Ganejda, filling in today for Chris Chappell. So this week, President Joe Biden departed on his first trip to Asia, making stops in South Korea and Japan. Biden met with other leaders of the Quad, an alliance between the U.S., Australia, Japan, and India aimed at countering China. And as Biden arrived, China began military exercises in the South China Sea. And Russia and China conducted their first joint military operation since the Ukraine invasion. It was meant to intimidate the U.S. and its allies. But that's not all. While that was happening, the Chinese and Russian air forces performed aerial operations over the Sea of Japan, the East China Sea, and the Western Pacific. Nuclear-capable bombers and fighter jets from both nations were present. Japanese forces scrambled as the Russian-Chinese forces approached Japanese airspace. But that's not all. While that was happening, South Korea also had to scramble its jets as at least four Chinese and four Russian warplanes entered its air defense identification zone. But that's not all. As Biden left Asia, North Korea released this footage of a new missile test. Now, I don't want to jump to any conclusions here, but I'm starting to think there are authoritarian powers in the world that would like to destroy freedom and democracy. Speaking of democracy, the thriving democracy of Taiwan. It lives under the constant threat of an invasion from an authoritarian superpower. The Taiwan issue came up a lot on Biden's Asia trip. Not that anyone from Taiwan was actually there. We do love talking about Taiwan behind their backs. But then Biden dropped the bombshell. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? Yes. You are? That's a commitment we made. That's incredible. A clear statement vowing to defend Taiwan from the Chinese Communist Party. That breaks decades of U.S.-Taiwan policy, strategic ambiguity, where the U.S. won't say one way or the other whether we would defend Taiwan. Except then this happened. In a statement afterwards, a White House official insisting that Biden was not suggesting any change in existing U.S. policy and that the president was referring to a commitment under the Taiwan Relations Act to provide Taiwan with the military means to defend itself. This is not the first time White House officials have tried to walk back what Biden himself has said. Here's President Biden at a CNN town hall last October. China just tested a hypersonic missile. What will you do to keep up with them militarily, and can you vow to protect Taiwan? Yes and yes. The White House quickly followed up with this. Well, there has been no shift. The president was not announcing any change in our policy, nor has he made a decision to change our policy. Uh, there is no change in our policy. Then in November, Biden said Taiwan is independent. It makes its own decisions. But what he meant to say was this. Can you clarify what the policy is? Because you said today independence and in the past. No, no, said I said that they have to decide. They, Taiwan, not us. So clearly, Biden has broken with strategic ambiguity in favor of a policy of strategic confusion. No, no, hear me out. Donald Trump constantly praised Xi Jinping, but he was the toughest president on China ever. And now Biden, after saying for a third time now that the U.S. was committed to coming to Taiwan's defense, it seems clear the president is leaning into a more assertive U.S. stance that differs with decades of U.S. policy and not just misspeaking. It's brilliant. Trump played the role of an egotistical madman, and Biden plays the role of a confused old man. The Chinese Communist Party has spent decades studying the U.S., but you can't predict the unpredictable. At least, that's what I hope. During his Asia trip, Biden announced a new 13-nation economic pact. It's designed to counter China's influence in the region. But... Taiwan is not among those 13 nations. 
Biden also announced he may reduce Trump-era China tariffs. That's it, Mr. President. Keep them guessing. Here's something, though, that might clarify things. This week, Secretary of State Antony Blinken gave a speech outlining the Biden administration's China policy. Blinken started out strong, criticizing China for undermining the international order. China is the only country with both the intent to reshape the international order and increasingly the economic, diplomatic, military, and technological power to do it. And then he pulled out the old, we have to work together line. China is also integral to the global economy and to our ability to solve challenges from climate to COVID. Look, working together sounds great, but like my mother always said, it takes two to tango. The Chinese Communist Party does not want to work with us. It wants to defeat us. And the Biden administration doesn't seem to be aware of that, diplomatically speaking. We are not looking for conflict or a new Cold War. To the contrary, we're determined to avoid both. Good luck with that. We'll have more on the Biden administration's China policy in an upcoming episode. And coming up after the break, the secrets of Chinese police exposed. Welcome back. A leak has revealed thousands of photographs of prisoners in China's Uyghur concentration camps. Oh my gosh, all those ethnic minorities in tears of happiness over how much they love the Chinese Communist Party. Truly, there is no new China without the Communist Party. Must be why there's a shoot to kill policy for those who try to escape. Yeah, that's also something we found out from this data leak. These are being called the Xinjiang police files. We're talking tens of thousands of files from internal police servers in Xinjiang, and they document the persecution of the Uyghurs that's gone on since at least 2017. Some of the stuff is just insane. Take this woman. Yes, that's a guard with a baton standing next to her. Guess what she was arrested for? Because her son was jailed for 10 years on terrorism charges. What terrorist activities did he commit? Documents describe her son as having strong religious leanings because he doesn't drink alcohol or smoke. That's right, she's in a concentration camp because her son doesn't drink and smoke. The youngest inmate was 15 years old when she was taken. The oldest was a 73-year-old woman. The source of the files claims to have hacked, downloaded, and decrypted them from a number of police computer servers in Xinjiang. They were then passed to Dr. Adrian Zenz, a scholar at the U.S.-based Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. Now, here's the best part. These files became public as UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet arrived in China earlier this week. She's going to be given a state tour of Xinjiang. Yes, the propaganda tour. Speaking of propaganda, the Chinese regime released a readout of Bachelet's virtual meeting with Xi Jinping. The Chinese version claimed that Bachelet said she admired China's efforts and achievements in eradicating poverty, protecting human rights, and realizing economic and social development. If you think this sounds shady, even for the UN, you would be right. The UN claims Bachelet didn't say anything about admiring China's human rights progress. Not that she exactly criticized it either. And of course, for Bachelet's protection from COVID, she's kept in a closed loop to strictly limit who has access to her in China. In that video call, Xi Jinping reminded her there's no need for preachers to boss around other countries. Speaking of totally not preaching, when she arrived in China, she was given a copy of Xi Jinping's newest bestseller, Xi Jinping on respecting and protecting human rights. We could try for weeks and never write a joke that good. I can't wait to see what her tour of Xinjiang reveals. And coming up after the break, one million Chinese people can't access their own bank accounts. Welcome back. Nearly one million Chinese people have been unable to access their bank accounts for over a month. It happened at four rural banks in Hunan province. And I know when you think of rural banks, you don't think one million people. But this is China. After a few days of people not being able to access their accounts, the bank said it was because they were upgrading their systems. Then China's central bank said it was because of an investigation. 
And as you can imagine, people started getting nervous about their money. Protests broke out in front of the Provincial Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission office. Protesters were demanding their deposits back. After days of protests achieved nothing, protesters decided to march to the Hunan Provincial Government offices, where the police were already waiting for them. But protesters refused to leave. After a brief standoff, the protest ended the way all protests do in China, with plainclothes police officers dragging protesters away and shoving them onto buses. Meanwhile, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang is warning that the Chinese economy is actually worse now than in 2020, at the initial peak of the pandemic. And remember, this is a guy who said China's GDP numbers are man-made and unreliable. So if he's saying things are bad, then you know they're actually even worse. There's an obvious solution, though. Rework the entirety of the Chinese economy to be geared around the pandemic. PPEs, testing stations, quarantine camps. Do you know the fortune you can make on COVID testing babies? If that doesn't work, there's always this surefire trick to deal with economic downturn. Bump up the ideological education. This is an article of the New Curriculum Review, a weekly magazine that provides Chinese language tutoring for high school students. It contains a story, supposedly from 1949, about a husband executing his wife for the good of China's communist revolution. Beneath the story, the editor of this state-run publication wrote, anyone who reads the story cannot help but be moved by the noble character and love of family and country of this revolutionary man who personally executed his wife. Apparently though, a lot of Chinese netizens were kind of freaked out by the story. But this isn't new. The party has always been telling people to put the party ahead of human life. Like, this was an official banner hung outside a court in Hunan province. The first line says, party nature over human nature. So I don't know why people were upset. After all, that's real communism. The Chinese Communist Party is paying college students to spy on and report classmates who violate COVID restrictions. This is The Paper, a party newspaper. It talks about a school offering a $740 reward for reporting on students who try to leave the school. And if you don't report them, you'll be placed on probation. Real communism, folks. Now, you may remember back in 2019, the before times, before COVID, when a trailer for Top Gun 2 came out. And it became pretty apparent some changes were made for China. The Japan and Taiwan flags were replaced with nonsensical symbols on Maverick's bomber jacket. Well, I'm happy to say for the final release, it looks like that error has been corrected. It's nice to report some good news for a change. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, fans who support our fight against communism on the crowdfunding website Patreon or our exclusive social media community on Locals. Today, we hear from Silicon Valley Stoic. Chinese submarines are untested, but more so is their military. If China attacks Taiwan, they will be like Russia, defeated, embarrassed, and broke. Well, Silicon Valley Stoic, I'm sure China is definitely paying attention to how Russia has fared in Ukraine. Russia on paper has a vastly superior military, but Ukrainians have managed to foil Russia's attempts at a quick and easy victory. Now, on paper, the Chinese military too looks superior to Taiwan's, but there are actually a lot of factors going against it. As you mentioned, China's military is untested. Unfortunately, as far as a naval battle goes, the U.S. Navy is also pretty untested when it comes to the type of operation we'd need to stop an invasion of Taiwan. So we need to find a balance. China's victory over Taiwan is far from inevitable, so there's no point in surrendering now. But China's military is also a threat that should be taken seriously. Thanks for supporting the show, Silicon Valley Stoic. And we can only make the show because of the support of viewers like you. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over at the crowdfunding website, Patreon. You'll get some cool perks, including the chance of having me or Chris answer some of your questions at the end of an episode. Once again, I'm Matt Ganesda. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.